Hi, my name's Daniela, Daniela Vermorty, and I'm going to chat to you about mindfulness, something that I'm very passionate about and have been passionate about for almost 25 years now. Yeah, when I was introduced to it in 1997 by reading one of Titch Nhat Hunt's uh, beautiful books called The Art of Mindfulness, and since then I've made it an every, you know, a daily practice. And I want to talk about mindfulness because, you know, you've undoubtedly heard of it and you've heard the word mindful mindfulness, but you might still be wondering, what exactly is it? Like, what does it all mean exactly? I mean, it sounds like something that, I'm, you know, is going to need my attention. And in this fast pace, information overload, age of anxiety do i even have time to give my energy or attention to something else right well i used to work in uh, corporate australia and uh, had a busy life now i'm a meditation teacher and a healer um, and a coach so i understand what it's like to live in a hectic an overwhelming life but it's exactly for that reason that I want to share why it's important to learn and understand how to be mindful because it's one of the most important components of being mindful is the emotional spiritual and mental well-being that it brings to you right so um, so it's really difficult for us to just exist, just to allow ourselves to exist and be who we are with no judgment, no worries, no expectations, right? It's something that's really challenging for us because we haven't been shown or taught how to do that. Instead, we've been taught how to think a lot. So to separate our essence of ourselves, you know, how we see ourselves and or who we truly are from our physical forms and our thought forms and our emotional form takes a bit of effort because we have to kind of relearn how to do that and mindfulness is a great way to start it's a great way to get you back into reconnecting with the truth of who you are again no judgment no expectations just allowing yourself to be who you are so mindfulness helps us build that awareness that emotional resilience and the internal strength that can get us to a place of really feeling and living from a peaceful place right because it also helps us um, understand from who we are you know what our purpose is why we're here so we can regain a sense of passion and belief in ourselves so it's also mindfulness now these days is used in various treatments for anxiety so it is a natural remedy for anxiety there's a lot of mindfulness based um, theories now that help so fortunately because you don't have much time or you're already overwhelmed you don't need to learn any new tools or have any skills that are extra special to do mindfulness, right? It's not something that only an elite group of people do. No, it is possible just as you are. And dare I say it, even easy. It's really quite simple to incorporate mindfulness into your every day and just being mindful a little here, a little there can end up making a huge difference in your life. You know, little by little, it becomes quite a lot. And so um, I'm, I'm aware of that song from uh, Paul Kelly from Little Things, Big Things Grow, and ain't that the truth. <laughs> so let's start small. Don't overwhelm yourself. But let's, well, what is mindfulness, first of all? You know, as I said, we've heard of it. We hear about it all the time but what does it actually mean what does it actually mean now if you um, do meditation and yoga you're you're probably a little bit ahead of um, the game here but meditation and yoga is different to mindfulness you know it sounds like um, it might be similar and you can incorporate mindfulness into meditation and yoga but mindfulness itself is something that's done every moment of the day it's something you can do every second of the day you don't have to find time to meditate you know like with meditation people struggle to find the 20 minutes a day to meditate or find the time to go and do yoga or tai chi or whatever uh, you choose to do 
unlike all of that, mindfulness can be done every second of the day in everything that you do, in all of the activities that you do. So it's not something that is exclusive to only, you know, some kind of special um, people or that unless you have this special insider knowledge, you can't do it. No, 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 not at all. So um, anyone can do it no matter what, and that includes you. So uh, according to the Oxford Dictionary, let me just read what the Oxford Dictionary says mindfulness is. It's a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts and bodily sensations used as a therapeutic technique. So simply put, mindfulness is just being completely aware of how you're feeling and what is going on in the present moment. It's just being fully aware of this moment and how you're part of this moment with no judgment, no analyzing, just acknowledging it all with just observing, just watching, right? <laughs> now, the other thing I want to make clear about mindfulness is that it does not mean that it is absent of all thoughts. No, that's not mindfulness, but rather it is acknowledging the thoughts and acknowledging them with no judgments at all. That's what mindfulness is. That's it. It's simple, right? Well, it can be simple, but at first it can be very challenging for people, you know, especially if you've never done it before. But let me tell you, it's worth it. It's worth it. There are so many science-based benefits now for mindfulness. And certainly you can do your research, but one of the major things that it helps with is stress, right? And stress is certainly something that um, is a big part of our society, stress, anxiety. So... Um, for example, how many times have you gone into a room or you've gone to a place and you've walked in there and then gone, what, what did I come in here for? <laughs> I know I've done it, <laughs> right? So that's a, it, when we forget things so easily, it's, in, it's an indication that we have too much stress in the body, right? Because stress causes forgetfulness. Because our mind is overwhelmed. We're overwhelmed and the brain just can't compute everything, right? It's it's so busy trying to think about the 5,865,000 things going through its head at the moment that it's really hard to stay focused. So being mindful can help us get focused, less forgetful, right? Because we bring it back to the present moment. What am I doing in this present moment? what do I need to do, right? So the more and more we're aware of our thoughts and our environment and just letting the experience just fully imprint on our minds. What do I mean by that? It means that when you walk into a room, right? You walk into a room and you're aware of walking into the room. And as you walk into the room, you're, you're aware of how you feel in the room. It feels warm or it feels cold. You like the color, you don't like the color, the curtains, you're aware of the texture of the fabric, of the furnishings. You're being fully in the moment and experience the fullness of that experience in the moment. So there isn't any other distraction, right? And the more and more we do that, the clearer and clearer our mind will be and we become less um, forgetful. Another benefit of mindfulness is that it helps us to focus on one thing at a time, right? So um, you're not multitasking. You know, when you're mindful, you're not multitasking. You're not <laughs> doing so many things in your mind. You're taking one thing at a time. Just like when you walk into the room, you're conscious of, I'm here. It's warm. The curtains, the color, the smell, one thing at a time. It might be happening quickly, but it is one thing at a time. So because of that, it helps you to be more focused. Um, 
efficient and even more productive, right? So yet another amazing benefit of mindfulness is that it helps us gain emotional intelligence. Oh, emotional intelligence. That's a big one too, right? What does that mean? So many times we overreact to things because there are so many um, emotional traumas that are unhealed in us, right? So being mindful of our emotional self can help us understand our thoughts because our thoughts are a result of how we're feeling, right? If we're feeling sad, we're going to have sad thoughts. If we're feeling happy, we're going to have happy thoughts. So mindfulness teaches us to separate our emotions and our thoughts and realize that our thoughts is not actually the fact. It's not always the truth, right? But how I'm feeling is the truth. And so we become an observer of our emotions rather than our thoughts. And through that, it can help us deal with anxiety, right? Because um, anxiety, we're constantly worrying about the future, even the past. But we're always worried about what's going to happen, what's going to happen. And because of that, we're inventing a lot of uh, scenarios for ourselves and catastrophizing a lot of things. So the more and more we can bring it back to the present moment and live in the present moment, acknowledging how we feel in the present moment, we're taking away that power of the thought that causes the anxiety, right? We're focused on the now. So I mean, other benefits of mindfulness include you know, the improved focus and, of course, concentration, but it also um, improves relationships, mm, relationship satisfaction, because we communicate better. Our ability to manage our stress of conflict, we're not on the defensive all the time. It enhances self-insight and intuition, which we'll trust more. It increases um, it, the immune system function which of course is going to make us healthier. It decreases the symptoms of depression, right? Which is going to make us happier. Less fatigue, as I said, you're going to have a lot more energy to do things. It improves self-esteem and body image because you're accepting of yourself, right? There's less anger, more patience. It enhances the uh, appreciation of the simple things of life, right? And that really is what leads us to have a fuller, richer life, just appreciating what we do have. But we'll appreciate it really uh, in, in each moment, the, the fullness of that experience in the moment will really enhance our lives. And it does increase our compassion and empathy. So there's less judgment of others and of course, less judgment of the self. So, you know, here are just a few ways that you can practice mindfulness in everyday life, you know, people presume that, you, have, you know, because I'm so busy, I don't have time to meditate. But remember, meditation is different. You, you, you take time out for meditation, you sit, you focus on your breath and go deep within. It does take that extra time, but it doesn't take time to practice mindfulness because you can practice mindfulness just performing your everyday activities, right? Everything you do is an opportunity to practice mindfulness. So, for example, and the more and more you do it, of course, the more and more it becomes part of who you are, the, the more and more you're going to benefit from it, right? So, for example, starting your day. So you wake up in the morning, you know, you have a morning routine, you wake up, you brush your teeth, you, whatever, all the things you do, being mindful in that moment. So in the morning when you wake up and you're brushing your teeth or your hair, how does the toothbrush feel? How, how does the water sound? How is that all coming together in that moment? The sounds, the smells, the actions, right? And it can be just this, just listening to the sound of the water in that moment, the bubbles that are forming in your mouth. So just creating a bit of mindfulness just in your morning routine. Again, it's just a few minutes while you're brushing your teeth or when you're having a shower, while you're having a shower. Now, hydrotherapy in itself is a powerful stress reduction tool as it is because water is so healing. But just paying attention to how it's cleansing you and how it's you know cascading over your body, the sound of the water and just how that feels for you. You can incorporate a meditation even while you're showering because the whole 
sense of water cleansing you can visualize that cleansing your whole body inside and outside so you know whether you take a bath or whether you have a shower but just listening to the water again just being in the moment another way is exercise or whether you do yoga or um, tai chi or whatever it is you do but when you're doing yoga like that is one of the best places that we naturally tend to be in the moment because you know when we're exerting ourselves physically we're like uh, we're right there with it right but again wonderful time to practice mindfulness because we're um we're paying attention to the body how does that feel it's an opportunity to scan the body and each area of the body what part of the body feels like it's exerting itself more notice how you feel right which part of the body needs more attention listening to the body eating and drinking now you're going to do that throughout the whole day right a few times a day so when you're eating like for example in the morning when i have my cup of tea i love that moment i love holding the cup and i love feeling it and i love the, the whole sensation of the tea and the flavor and how how it makes me feel when i drink tea being fully mindful of enjoying that moment tea coffee whatever it is but the more mindful you are about what you're eating let me tell you something you're not going to overeat and you're going to become very conscious of what goes into your body right and so um when you when you're chewing it's going to slow down your chewing you're not going to eat as fast right and so you're probably going to find that you'll have less indigestion eat less and less indigestion right so now some of us get to wait in traffic in the morning but we're all a lot of us end up waiting in lines whether you're just at the supermarket at the bank or wherever it is you're waiting in line i always take that moment to practice mindfulness it's very easy to get frustrated in those moments especially you know they go oh, oh come on come on come on come on but if you can just step back a moment and just remember to be mindful and observe what's going on without any judgment right just observe and just notice how you're feeling in that moment hmm. and you'll probably find that the line moves a lot faster right but it just using mindfulness in those moments and rather than feeling frustration helps us to stay grounded and it helps us to keep things into perspectives you know rather than again overreacting breathing is important you try not breathing go on try not breathing for about 10 minutes how important is the breath so breathing exercises help so much when it comes to stress and anxiety our body needs it it needs it <laughs> so slowing down the breath lowers the blood pressure because it slows down your heart rate it also lowers anxiety great spending time with your animals your pets we love our pets because they make us feel good so when you're patting and brushing them or cuddling be mindful gardening is another way to be mindful wonderful to be out in the garden the hands in the dirt whatever cooking when you're cooking also when you're cooking and you're fully mindful of chopping and ingredients and stirring that what energy are you putting into the food that's going into the cooking that will be going into your body that's another way of being caught and all of those domestic things that you do every day the cleaning the dishes the laundry the vacuuming wonderful opportunities to be mindful because you become very aware of your environment now also when we're cleansing and cleaning our environment we're also cleansing and cleaning our mental state as well this is one of those things that i believe is becoming a lost art and that is mindfully listening when you're in a conversation with a person how does it feel when you're talking and someone is busy looking at their phone or their watch or distracted by things so if we can get back into that art of listening to each other not only will you make someone feel better but they're going to start doing it as well so that to me is one, is a great place to practice mindfulness when you're having a conversation listening to music especially if the music has no uh, lyrics to it you know music that you can just sit and enjoy and listen to each note brings you to the moment and it uplifts you when you're walking i love to walk each day and when i walk 
that's a great opportunity to be mindful becoming aware of the gardens the, the trees the air the sun the, the wind whatever is going on basically your surroundings and noticing how my body moves when i'm walking but also you know taking the opportunity to be f feel grateful for my legs for my lungs and for the sky and the freedom and the trees and the fresh air etc for the flowers all of that when you're creating when you're doing something creatively and how many times have you found yourself immersed in a project and you look up at the time and you know two three hours have gone by because you're doing what you love that's called state of flow that's in the flow and so if you can tap into that state of flow, it's a, you will be naturally practicing mindfulness. Yeah, because you're totally in the moment. You're not thinking about the past or the future. You are there focused on the project, right? And so just like you start your morning routine with some mindfulness, you can do your end of day routine, your nighttime routine, your getting ready for bed routine. Same thing, whether you're brushing your teeth, whether you're writing in your uh, gratitude journal, whether you, whatever you do at night to get ready for bed is also an opportunity to practice mindfulness, just being mindful of what is going on for you. The gratitude list is a really wonderful way to end the, uh, the end the day. And the other thing about doing that is that you'll sleep really well the majority of the world is sleep deprived and sleep deprivation causes a lot of stress and anxiety so so how easy is that to make mindfulness part of your everyday life right it's pretty easy right it's not as challenging as you think but i do challenge you to choose throughout the day to incorporate mindfulness into your day incorporate it into the activities that you do and I know it can be challenging at first but remember consistency is key so start with one thing do it for a few minutes each day it will become your new habit just stick with it right continue to practice mindfulness regularly give it some time to really be effective you'll naturally want to receive the time you spend being mindful as you know as you begin to reap the rewards of a greater peace of mind you, you'll just increase the time of doing it because you'll see the rewards you know you'll see the benefits so how are you going to incorporate mindfulness into your everyday life I challenge you to do it and let me know let me know how you go okay and so just to finish off I just want to do a one minute meditation, one minute mindful meditation, okay? So just close your eyes and take a deep breath. And let the sound of this bell resonate with you. Breathe it in. May it resonate in the deepest parts of your body. And just be fully aware of how that feels, that sound on your body. Is it relaxing or not? Just taking a deep breath. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And please, if you're interested in pursuing a little bit more about mindfulness, contact me directly because I do classes and online courses as well. So thank you today and peace.